Hello, welcome everybody to today's masterclass with Chatters, which we're showcasing Redkin. I'm so excited to have you guys all on here today. My name is Cindy Duplantis. I am Chatters one and only ambassador. So today we are going to dive right into that amazing goodie box that I think that you had that showed up to your house and we're going to talk all about it. So come on with me <laughs> as I just, you know, travel really far to the stool. <laughs> so today I'm going to like, first of all, I want you to all to know at any point, if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know because I'm going to be seeing them and I'll be able to answer for you right away. And we're, we want to make this like a really nice, like we want to connect with you today. So I want to appreciate the fact that you've invited us into your place. We're sitting together and I want this as a one-on-one. -on -one. So feel free at any point to shoot us some messages and questions and I'll be happy to answer. So first off, we are going to be taking a break at... 1240. So we're going to go. I want you to hang tight with me as we go over everything. And then at 1240, we're going to take a break. And that's, I'm going to have a little project for you to do during that time. I also know in your box, you got an Uber Eats gift card. So in that, I want you to be able to uh, go ahead and order your whatever you would like from Uber Eats during that time. And then we will see you back here. But I will give you all that information shortly. For now, we're going to dive right into that really good goodie box that you have. So I'm pretty sure you've all opened it already because I don't know about you, but when mine arrived, I was really excited to see what it was all about. <laughs> so first thing first, I know that you guys all received a blow dryer. So when you take it out, I want you to make sure that you have this and you didn't take this and threw it in the garbage. This is so important to have. By Hot Tools, they gave you this great blow dryer and you have the nozzle. I will talk about the importance of this later, but I want to make sure that you have it on your blow dryer because it, there is a lot of heat prevention that you get from here. So that's number one. Now, I also know you have a bunch of styling goodies back there. We are going to talk about that after our break when we're using them. Because I don't know about you, I can hear all the information, but if I'm not using it, it's not retaining. So we're going to dive right in. We're going to make sure that you can use all these products and we're going to talk about it together. First, we're going to jump into the ABCs right here from Redken. Now, if everybody sees their products here, we have our shampoo, conditioner, and our leave-in conditioner. Now, I don't know if you notice right off the bat the name of this product. It's called the Acidic Bonding. So, I'm a hairstylist. Oh, hold on one second. I'm actually going to put on my glasses because I want to sound a little bit more scientific during this time. There we go. <laughs> I'm a hairstylist, so I already know what this means, but for anybody who's not a hairstylist, when you hear the word acidic or you see the word acidic, it might be a little bit scary for you for your hair. So I'm actually going to dive into the science behind all of this so you understand. So talking about this, doing posts on it, and having the total background for what this means is really helpful to understand how it works. All right? So first off, we're going to talk about how your hair gets damaged. We all know that we naturally start off with, you know, beautiful hair that has like its natural color. There is no product residue or color, maybe uh, damage or heat tools. This is what happens as we get older to your hair. And what that does to the actual hair itself, each strand, you're going to be getting breakage. So what happens is it starts to break down the bonds in the hair. Your cuticles lift, and this is where you can have a lot of um, weakness. If the cuticles are lifting in the hair, then those are really weak points. If you lose those cuticles, those are the points where your hair is stretching and breaking. So this is really important to know. What causes that is from using color, maybe over and over again, not using proper products in your hair, and definitely heat protection. Because as we style our hair, the heat will go after those bonds in your hair and will cause those cuticles to lift or start lacking in protein. And that's really big with color. 
So when you start to color your hair, what you're doing is that peroxide will lift that cuticle to get in to remove that color, deposit color, then you go back, the cuticle lays flat again. During this process and with the color treatment process, you're using an alkaline base. Okay, I don't mean to lose everybody on this, I wanna show you like this. If we had a really large ruler right now, right in the middle, our pH level of water is seven just so you understand. Water is neutral always. When your pH level changes, it will either go one way. It'll go alkaline or it'll go acidic. So alkaline, you're getting into hair colors and all those great things. And then acidic, you're getting into what we're gonna talk about today. And this is the shampoo and conditioner. And when both properties are important to be able to use, but just like anything, if it's not balanced, then you're going to get damaged. So when you're going into the acidic, the acidic level, that pH level seven and above, that pH level is going to help to seal down those cuticles. You're replacing those bonds that are starting to break, the cuticles that are, are lifting, all that stuff. And you're going to maintain your style that you have and your hair health. So this means color treatments that you've had in your hair, um, anything from heat styling, this helps to save that. So for any of you that have ever had your hair lifted, I mean, come on, we are, we're going into summer season, balayages are all a big thing. Anytime there's actually peroxide in your hair, you are going to be put, doing some kind of stress on those bonds. If you've ever noticed, when you get your hair colored like that, and we're talking about just say a balayage or lifting, and your hair fades, that's because the cuticles in your hair have been lifted and they're not quite sealed down, so you're literally washing that color out. Hence why we always talk about salon, um, uh, salon products and why it's so important. When you're going into just say uh, a product that is not bought at a salon from certain drug stores, you could be getting into more of an alkaline based. So th that means the pH levels in your shampoo and conditioner are at the stage where it's gonna lift those cuticles and you can actually remove your color. So this is really important to understand and understand how this works. So we're getting into that level that is so gentle, it's actually more than, the pH level is softer than water. So I mean, you can't go wrong with that. So we wanna make sure that not only is it gonna feel amazing on your hair, but it's gonna help to really like um, get that hair health back into place. Now, if you ever wondered how to know if your hair is healthy or not, we know those like first things is touch, feel, but to understand if your cuticles are in that point of being compromised, you can also do this fun little test at home. You can do it on your break, so don't do it right now, but you can see if you have porous hair. I myself have porous hair naturally, and that is where um, my hair will actually like float. So if you go into the tub and you lean your hair back and you place your hair, if it sinks, that means your hair is in a good spot. If it's like, if it's, if it's grabbing all that water and it's sinking, sorry, it means that it, it, you're in a good position. If it's floating, my hair has a lot of air bubbles all collected in there and it's not, it needs that love. We need to close down those cuticles and we need to get it some, some actually the shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> so we can get into that point of getting my hair back into health. And that's caused from, like I said, color treating and heat styling. So I'm gonna tell you why this is so important and I'm gonna show you, first of all, my mannequin head. Okay, so <laughs> I wanted to style her and actually, I really wanted to just test it out and try it out. And not only did I try it out on myself, but I want to try it out on Erica here. And I want to show you this. This, I went right into the basics. I used the shampoo, the conditioner, and the leave-in treatment on one side of her hair. And I used just a regular shampoo um, from a drugstore on the other side. So I just wanted to show you the difference. Now, when I said I wanted to do this super easy, I'm letting you know, I literally washed her hair in the shower, put in the leave-in treatment, did um, the other side, and I left her on the side of my tub just drying. I didn't even brush her hair. There's not anything has been put through this. I used my finger to make the parting. I really wanted to get down to the nitty gritty to see if what it's saying it's going to do is going to happen. And if you can notice right off the bat, 
her, this is just one treatment. This is just one um, styling done. And these mannequin heads get a lot of uh, styling to them. It has already, I can already see the difference in just this one side. Like I said, you can tell on the ends, I haven't brushed her hair at all. There's like, I haven't gone through with the blow dryer and try to smooth her out so I could say that that's what happened. This is literally what happened and you can see how smooth that is. From the other side, you can see how all these little hairs are sticking up. They're trying to, they're getting frizzy. They're trying to go after moisture. Actually, hot tip. If you suffer from moisture or like frizziness in your hair, that's because your hair is lacking moisture. So each strand is literally going into the air, trying to grab those water molecules. So that's why you tend to get the frizziness. So this is why this is so important to be able to see this. You really see the difference. And like I said, I didn't do anything. She literally was sitting on the edge of my tub drying and this is how she dried. I was so impressed that I wanted you guys to see this. Cause like I said, I like to experiment and try things out to make sure that it's, it's doing what it's claiming it's doing, and it is. So, in each one of these, the ABC, we're starting off, oh, this one's the shampoo. You're going to go in and on your break, you're going to use the shampoo. Now, I want to talk about how to properly do that. So, if you are someone who likes to, um, you know, go a couple days without washing their hair, you know, two, three, four, five. I'm not gonna say anything, don't worry. But if you're somebody who wants to go that long without washing your hair, you're gonna have to double shampoo. If you have naturally curly hair and you use products, if your hair isn't naturally curly hair and you just use products, you're also gonna want to double shampoo your hair. So basically I'm gonna tell you, you're probably all gonna wanna double shampoo your hair because this is the best way of really getting out any sort of buildup and any free radicals in there to get it nice and clean. Now you don't have to worry about stripping it. Now this has always been um, a question that's asked to me about doing a double shampoo. You don't wanna get rid of any sort of natural oils that are good for your hair. You're taking it and you're creating damage doing this. It's not gonna happen because remember our pH levels, this is gonna be really great for your hair. So double shampoo is no problem but I'm gonna tell you how important it is to do and how to. So when you go in and you actually place the shampoo in your hair, you're going to put first start with a dime size. Now I can use a dime size in my length of hair, not an issue. If you wanna do a quarter, if you're a little bit longer and thicker, by all means do that. But you're gonna first wet your hair, you're gonna go ahead and put that shampoo into your hair, really scrubbing at your scalp. Now for anybody who's ever noticed this in the past, when you've gone to shampoo your hair and you're really working it in with those fingertips and it's not lathering, don't go ahead and put more shampoo. That's not what's gonna make the bubbles happen, all right? This means the shampoo is working and it's working at breaking down all of the products and that layer that's on your hair right now to clean it. So you gotta make sure when you put it in, you're not using your palm of your hand and rubbing it around. You wanna get in there using your fingertips to really work it in. Because this, is, this has the acidic bonding in here, remember, it needs to do what it needs to do. So it's gonna go in, it's gonna remove any sort of red residue on the scalp, but as it travels down your hair strands, you don't have to worry about if your hair is in a bad state or compromised or freshly colored or anything, it is not gonna lift any color. All right. In fact, what it's going to do is promote to clean it, but yet because the pH level is there, that's soft and gentle, it's going to help to repair those bonds and bring uh, the cuticle to start lying down. It's making sure it's starting to seal. I hope this is all making sense to all of you guys. I just felt like it was really important to talk about the why and how this can help I can tell you a whole bunch of facts, but I really want you guys to start seeing it as a hairstylist and what we're looking at and why those kind of damages happen and how you can repair it, all right? Yes, yes. I love that you're asking me that now, event-wise, that this is really important to know and it is definitely safe on color-treated hair. The fact that you brought that up, I want you to know this is safe on every hair type. So if you're incredibly coarse, curly, dry, it doesn't matter. Even if you naturally have oily hair, this is great on your hair because you're still removing any sort of buildup and you're making sure that the hair is staying intact. You don't need uh, a 
a shampoo that is really aggressive. Because what that actually does is it overstimulates your oil glands to actually make it more oily. So you're kind of giving like this wrong scenario. You want to make sure the pH levels in your hair is right on. That way your hair will not overstimulate any oil glands and you have that um, uh, therapy to be able to help to repair the hair. Oh yeah, I know. T-Zone is excited. Girls, you have no idea. Wait until you, you feel this in your hair. So we've done the first shampoo. Now once you've worked it in, and don't worry if it's not in a good lather, you're just gonna really work that in. You're gonna go ahead and rinse out, and you're gonna do the same thing again. For anybody who used a quarter size in the beginning, the next double shampoo, the second shampoo, only use a dime size. You really don't need a lot. And when you go in, you're gonna notice the lather that you're gonna get from there. Your hair's gonna feel soft and you're gonna have those bubbles because the first rinse, it's like the pre-rinse, right? We removed all of the free radicals, any sort of uh, buildup, anything that's going on in your hair. We've removed that and now you've gone in and now you're giving it that good deep cleaning but without stripping away anything that is very essential for your hair. All right, so this is really great to have on your color treated. If your hair is, um, you know, compromised from over styling for, with heat uh, stylers, very great to be able to repair. Okay. Now that I've talked about the fact that it, there's bonding in here and there's proteins, we're going to jump into the conditioning process. All right. So now this would be B of our ABC process with Redken. So B right now is the conditioner. So you're going to do the same thing. And this is for anybody who asks me these questions about conditioning. By all means, as you have any questions, if you forget right now, make sure to post it in the window. We'll be happy to answer if I don't get to them right away. All right? I <laughs> just wanted to let you know. But as you put the conditioner in your hair, the process is in a good spot. You want to be able to start on your ends. You want to go to mid length and then you just want to lightly touch the root area if you tend to have a dry scalp or not at all if you want to make sure that if your hair is, tends to be a little bit on the oily side, you don't have to bring that conditioner in there. I get this question a lot. Some people that have dry hair, their hair is finer. They don't want to use conditioner because they're afraid it's going to weigh their hair down. Well, this is not the case at all. You want to make sure that it's not going to weigh your hair down, but you want to make sure that you put that conditioner in the right spot. If you're worried about that um, weighing your hair down, you technically don't need conditioner in those roots. You can just go from mid length to end and you do this while you're in the shower. Now in the conditioner, there is really great bondings in here because this is really where the hair has been cleaned. Now you're going in with the bonds and the protein. So the protein is really important to understand about as well because the protein is what makes your hair strong. So if those bonds in your hair are starting to break down from color treating or heat styling, it's the proteins that are starting to break down. That's why you see products that can have like a protein infusion in them. That's why you want to be able to have something in there to help bring that strength back. What's really important to understand why you need that protein, not only to make it strong, but when you're repairing that, if I put a moisture molecule in your hair, I feel like I should put my glasses back on because I sound so scientific. <laughs> when I, if I put a moisture molecule in your hair and your hair hasn't been repaired with those bonds, your cuticle is lifted. That moisture molecule will go in and when you go to rinse out that conditioner or brush it after your shampoo or your conditioning, all it's doing is going to come right out. It's not going to stay. That's why it's important to have that acidic pH level because this is going to bring it down. You got those proteins to help seal it down and that moisture is going to be locked into the hair. Remember, all of these get affected. The protein gets affected when your hair is color treated or heat styled, or you're actually even, you could be lacking it in your nutrition. That, these are all common things that we see. So that's why you want to be able to have the acidic concentrate into your hair in the conditioning process. Now, I know I've been asked if you can keep this in your hair for longer than just, uh, you know, put it in and rinse it out. By all means, if you like to be in the shower for a little bit longer and leaving it in there, that's no problem. You don't have to worry about using this as a treatment as because we have an actual treatment in your kit. So that goes along and that is part of the C process. All right, I have curly finer hair. I love that Sophia is asking me this right now because this is a huge thing. 
And if you were to use a leave-in treatment, would you recommend still using conditioner, wondering if they are both? No. Okay, I love this. Because this is why I, I love coming on here and we can ask back and forth. So what is really important to understand is when your hair is dry and it's finer, it is thriving for moisture. You want your hair to be um, healthy. It doesn't mean you have to compromise your volume. My hair itself is actually very thin. So I use this all the time because I want my hair to be super healthy. I do a lot of color treating to it and I do a lot of heat styling. So my hair is dry from that. This is really, really important to do. Now just remember on the placement of using products, this is number one. So when you are wanting lift in your hair, that starts right from the base, right here. You wanna be able to get that lift in there. You're gonna have brushing, you're gonna have gravity, you're gonna have oils. There's all these different things that can pull your hair back down, all right? So understanding where you wanna have that lift is now you're gonna understand of where you're gonna put that product. So using the shampoo is crucial because you wanna be able to clean that hair properly. And then next, conditioning is also crucial because you wanna make sure that your hair is at the proper pH level, all of those cuticles are sealed, they're nice and shiny, you got your protein there and you want it to be strong. Especially if your hair is on the finer side, you probably get a lot more tension on your hair when you're brushing it on a day to day. Next is, if you're worried about having your volume in those areas, you just don't wanna concentrate on putting a treatment there. So the leave-in treatment is still highly recommended, but it all depends on where you'd like to put it. For me, I like to put it on my ends because that's where it needs it the most. I have a balayage, so that's where I get a lot more of my chemical service. So that's when I would dive in to be able to put my treatment in my hair. So after I get out of my shower, I've already done both the, um, the process A, B. Now I'm going into our acidic prevent and concentrate right now um, into the hair, the leave-in conditioner, and I'm going to focus in on those problem areas. This is, just picture this like using sunscreen on your skin. So you're not gonna put the sunscreen in areas that the sun is not gonna see, right? <laughs> so this is the same idea. You wanna be able to put this great um, conditioning treatment in those areas that are gonna get a lot more action. So if you're gonna need hot styling tools, if you're going to be using um, anything like that, if you have areas that are already colored, this is a good area to be able to put your treatment in. And then you don't have to wash it out at all. And trust me when I tell you, this is really great. It does not weigh it down at all. When I go into the blow dry process, I have no issues with um, still getting that volume. Like I still have my volume from doing it. So I, I'm absolutely obsessed. And one of my other favorite things about having this leave-in treatment here is not only is it the extra protection after the shampoo and conditioner, the extra bonds and the protein in there, but it has a heat styling. This is everything. Heat styling is one of those underrated products that we don't realize how important it is to use, to use um, a, a heat styling protectant on the hair because I can pretty much guarantee at one point your hair is going to be exposed to heat. Maybe you don't flat iron your hair all the time. Maybe it's like you don't even use a curling iron because your hair is naturally curly. Just the fact that you run out and you're sitting in your car and you got those sun rays coming into your hair, this is all heat on the hair. So you wanna make sure that you always have some form of protection. Now, I've seen a lot of products in my in my time as a hairstylist and there's ones that are just spray in you know right before you curl your hair so if you're not deciding to do that for that day you don't want to use the curling iron you're not going to use the spray in so you kind of go a few days without using anything this isn't the case you can definitely put this in right off the bat right out of the shower because it is a leave-in treatment but it also doesn't leave that either a crispy feeling if you've ever experienced that when you're using a hot tool you almost get that crispy kind of like you don't want to run your hands through your hair after doesn't have that feeling afterwards it just leaves your hair super soft and flowy we know talking trends going into the summer were very natural we want to keep the hair into a natural texture so this is great all right so event wise i love that you're asking me questions here so two amazing products in one Yes, leave in and the heat protector. So great, honestly, this is such a great thing to be able to have because it is great for everyone out there. If your hair is fine and curly, no problem. It's not gonna weigh anything down. And like I said, remember where your placement is of where you wanna put in that leave in conditioner. 
How would you recommend using the heat protectant when your hair is damp or on dry after a blow dry? Awesome, I love that you asked me that. So what I would suggest is when it does come out, it is as a cream. So you wanna be able to put this in right out of the shower. Thank you for this reminder because this is another hot tip for you guys. If you've ever noticed when you've gone to the hairstylist and you used all the exact same products that she used, but it still didn't turn out the same way, I'm gonna tell you one thing, it all depends on when you put that product in the hair. So if you put your product in the hair straight out of the shower when your hair is soaking wet, you know that product will be diluted because of the water. So if you're in a situation where your hair needs a little bit more moisture and protectant, then maybe you wanna towel dry your hair first to remove some of that water and then go ahead and put it in. And starting at the ends, working your way up. So this way you're not uh, compromising how well that product is used because as a hairstylist, I'm gonna let you know, usually when you come out of my basin, I brush your hair first, I'll probably spray in a leave-in, uh, I'll put in a leave-in treatment and I'm doing it at that point where it is a little bit on the towel dry. After I cut your hair, I would go back in and add anything else that I need to be able to put in. So I might even put the leave-in treatment if I think that you, you need some more, or if a volumizer, it's going in when the hair is like almost 80% dry. So that's why it's really important to know at what time you put in your treatment. So if you're worried, like I said, about it weighing down and you don't want as much moisture, then put it in when your hair is soaking wet so it dilutes it, and then go back if you want to have a little bit more oomph, put it in after you've like towel dried it. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> so not only does this add that heat protection, it also adds that protein. So you have that strength in the hair. So if your hair is at all compromised, if you have that hair that is like when it's wet, it almost has that bit of that elastic -y feeling, you are really in a compromised spot. And if you're a person that doesn't even like to brush your hair at any point because it is so compromised, you can definitely do that with this in there because adding those proteins back in will help to strengthen it back up. So this is why the system is so amazing. And I love that Redken has brought this out to really make you understand. That's why I kind of like dove in deep in the beginning there, understanding what it means to be um, alkaline and acidic. Cause I think it's really important for you to understand why like the pH levels are so crucial and the difference in buying um, a high quality product to maybe not so high quality because those pH levels change, right? So this is really important to know when you're styling your hair and being able to leave it in. Now, if anybody has their hair in a state where um, it's naturally curly like mine is, so in the summer when I let it go uh, and I wanna have a little extra, I've noticed my frizz is starting to come back in some certain areas. This is one of my hot tips. I actually will put this into a spray bottle of water, shake it up really well and just go ahead and spray and I can remist and like revamp those curls again. It's also really great to bring to behind, beside the pool or even to the beach. If you've been at the lake, if you've gone to the cottage, anything like that, this is really great. If you have well water, all of these things are really important to know because those pH levels change and it's really good to be able to put back into the hair after you've been in the water. Like I said, the lake or uh, just like by the pool. These are all really, really great things to be able to reuse to amp up those natural curls again. Cause like I said, I'm talking hair trends. So for the summer, our trends are definitely going all natural. So these are really, really great things to understand because you want your hair to look the best if you can when it's all natural. Another hot tip, Okay, so this is like me just being a little bit, I'm just sharing some really fun information, is we're seeing a lot of those fun trends of the wet look. Has anybody, anybody seen it? Maybe wanna try it out, rock that wet look out? Yeah, we have the summer coming. This is the best time to try it out. So what a great way to do that and also have a treatment in your hair at the same time. Go ahead and spray your hair back Put it into that low bun and you can also use this and when it's put onto wet hair and just kind of like spray down into that low bun, you can have that look of that wet look. I mean, if we're going to really talk about it right now, you can also mix it together with our Guts 10 by Redken. This is one of my 
fave go-to products when styling because it has so many great essential things about this product. So I'm gonna talk about this, all right. <laughs> Thank you, so Sophie just asked about having the sunscreen for the hair, exactly. Now, when I say a sunscreen for the hair, I just want you to understand there is a difference between having a UV protectant and a heat protectant. And we're not really diving into the UV, that's really difficult actually to get into hair, um, but we wanna make sure that the heat there is what we're really focusing on because heat will also lift those cuticles and you'll remove your color and you'll leave your hair in that compromised state. So when you have the heat protectant in there and also those proteins to strengthen it, that won't happen. I just find when we talk about hairstyling products and I put it in a way of being more of a skincare regime, it's a little bit of a better understanding of how it works because we've really been focused in on skincare. I mean, we all know like the problems with if you don't wear sunscreen, you can have skin cancer and all these things. So we've really had that focus. But understanding what heat and everything can do to the hair is really, really important. So just under like knowing that this is kind of like that same idea. You want to put this on first. So even though we, we did the shampoo, we did the conditioner in the shower, we've gone out, we've put in this conditioner, the leave-in conditioner, this is important to put in first. Because it has a heat protector and because it has those bonds and those proteins, we want it to be able to be absorbed into the hair. So after you've done that, that's when, whoops, you can go into your styling products. Just like if you're using a primer and you were using that primer with the sunscreen with your makeup, you put that on first and then you go back and you would put on all of the other makeup that you wanna wear that day. So it does the exact same thing. In fact, really enhances how your products are gonna be used because if you are repairing the hair and you're laying down all those cuticles and you don't have those breakage points or anything, the way of laying on products after the fact, it's just going to be put in such an easy and, um, how would you say? It's, it's, it's laid down in more of an even spread and it's not concentrated in just in some areas, all right? So jumping into a little bit of our uh, products here and we are using Guts 10 today and I'm gonna be talking about Triple Dry 15. Guts 10 is one of the top products that we use during Toronto Fashion Week, Vancouver Fashion Week, and New York Fashion Week. I'll tell you this because I've worked backstage on all of them for many years, and this is one of the go-to products. Now, if you read it on the bottle, or Guts 10 is for volume. So it's great to know because that's exactly what it does. It looks like hairspray and mousse got together and had a baby and it came out with Guts 10. <laughs> so when it sprays it, it sprays it like a hairspray but froths up like a mousse. So if you're somebody who needs that volume, you're gonna be spraying that into the root area and when you blow dry your hair, that's what's gonna give you that gritty texture to bring it up and you have that volume. Now when I say gritty texture, it doesn't feel like you have uh, a leftover residue. It almost feels like the day after you've had your hair styled and a little bit of back combing, the back combing might be gone, but you have that just that you know lift. This is what I feel like Guts 10 does. So not only can you use it for volume, but it also does really great for the wet look as well. So spraying it in your hair after you've added your leave-in conditioner, you want to center part, bring it down to a low bun and you want to rock that J-Lo kind of wet look. Amazing for that, okay? Even though it comes out like a mousse, you can still finger rake and you will get that texture in the hair and it feels so good. And when you spray it down the mousse onto the ends of the ponytail and wrap that in, it will still give you that wet look. So this is a very versatile product. Now, if you're somebody who tends to, um, their hair tends to fall flat, you like a little bit of that texture when you're styling, you're going for that beach wave and you wanna have a little bit more, then you know what? Go ahead and spray this not only in the root, but you can spray it down the mid lengths to the ends. This also gives you that texture in the hair to be able to work it. Now, I'll be honest with you, I didn't use it today because I really wanted to feel um, this shampoo and the conditioner and the leave-in in my hair. So I wanted to be able to show you guys that this is what I got from it with the one-time use, it's amazing. All right, 
So our guts 10 is for the volume. And like I said, you can also use it for that wet look. This is my hot tip for you. And just to understand with Redkin, they have these numbers on the side, okay? So we have triple dry 15 and we have our Redkin guts 10. Now, the numbers, if you don't know what they're for, it's not the in order of how they made the products, like this was the 10th product where I can never made. <laughs> it's actually, what it's, it's telling you is the hold factor. So if you were to look at a scale and zero, like one is the hold of water, then this is 10 times the hold of water. So this is a really great way of a gauge of knowing if that hairspray is gonna to be too strong for you or not strong enough. So the higher the number, the more strength that product's going to have. But being a little bit of like, now you're, you're kind of like an honorary hairstylist, we're talking about this right now. If you put this in your hair when it's very damp or soaking wet, you're not gonna get a true 10 out of it because it's been diluted. So if you're nervous about trying a product for the first time, put it in your hair when it's really damp. So then you know it's more of a diluted source. If you're somebody who wants a ton of volume, you can go ahead and put this on dry hair or towel dry. Just a hot tip, if you put it on when your hair is dry, know that it's product. So you have to work it in and use that blow dryer to be able to blow dry that. Because if you leave it as is, remember I talked about that wet look, you'll have that kind of clumpy if you don't actually dry it and style it with a blow dryer. So that's just a note to self. Remember that you can do this and trust me, it works amazing. Now where Triple Dry 15 is another one of my fave products because I don't know how many of you use dry shampoo yeah right so dry shampoo hairspray got together had a baby they had triple dry 15 it is amazing it is literally a dry shampoo and a hairspray put together so it works great for being able to vamp up those roots if you want to put a little bit of back combing in your hair and you want to spray a little bit to eliminate any of those oils in there and it also has a holding factor of 15 this is a definite great go-to hairspray very versatile it will give your hair a little bit more of a drier finish just like our uh, dry shampoo does so just remember that when you are spraying it in your hair Will you like see a bit of a white residue like a dry shampoo sometimes does? No, I've actually never experienced that. So you'll be fine with it, but it's a really great look for all hair types. It's great to go in. If you wanted to have something that like, you know, just that soft fluffy texture of that beach wave that's really hot, this is definitely a go-to um, hairspray to use because not only does it give you that PC dry texture, it's not gonna clump that hair together to make it look finer. It'll give you more of that voluminous flow. It's a really nice product to use after dropping your hair out of a curling iron and you need it to cool before you run your fingers through. Just go for a quick mist over top to cool down those curls and then go ahead and run your fingers through that. And it'll give that like bounce because the dry shampoo separates and gives that little bit of um, that je ne sais quoi, you know, <laughs> that fluffy, that like volume. And then the hairspray gives it that total hold. So, and with a really light one at that because it's uh, 15. So it is one of their lighter um, holding hairsprays. So guys, I am really excited to be able to jump in with you guys all uh, with these products. We also have our oil for all. I will talk about that when we come back from your break because this can be put on wet and dry hair. And it is exactly what it says. It is oil for all. So it is all hair types. In fact, just so you know, all of the products being used today is for all hair types. So I don't want anybody scared or worried about using any of this on their hair because it is perfect. I cannot wait for you to be able to experience these two right now, starting with the A, B, and then going into the C. So remember, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask you to go ahead and wash your hair. Please double shampoo if you need to. Majority of you probably do. This is what we always do. Give a good double shampoo. Get in with those fingertips. Work it through. You don't need a lather right away. The second shampoo will give you that lather. And then go in with the conditioner. Remember, starting at your ends, working your way up. And then we're going to go in with the leave-in conditioner afterwards. Same thing, starting on the ends. If you're worried about any sort of way down, do it when your hair is really wet. And then you can see how it's going to work out. After that, and you come back here, you are going to make sure to set up your blow dryer. You have one of those wet brushes there, and I'm gonna show you 
how you can do a blowout at home. And I'm telling you, I'm doing the same process. I'm actually gonna go wash my hair right now and I'm gonna restyle with you um, this afternoon and it's going to be amazing. So guys, are we ready? Now, what time are we coming back again, Jessica? We are coming back at one o'clock. This gives you 20 minutes to be able to do this. You can, oh, yep, Chatter's Hair Salon, just let us know on there too. I need you back because we are going to walk through this process together and how to get that perfect blowout. All right, guys? I hope this morning has been amazing so far. As you're processing and you have any questions, by all means, shoot it in the block there. We'll make sure to answer it when I get back and we'll see you soon at one o'clock. All right, see you. <laughs> Bye. You and me stuck on the ocean now Nothing but waves in this villain in I want to dry up but you Just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here All my reasoning have disappeared I want to bury the hatchet And find the way back to our home Our home, our home We don't have to drift inside this stone not let us fade away it's not a price i want to pay and it's not too late no we lost our purpose chasing all that surplus you were all that i need i feel that we can break free we can still go back there to a place with no cares we can turn this ship around we can turn this ship around all the way back home have worn us down and slowly we are drowning that's why you need to come with me with me with me turn around 180 degrees and cross the sea i will not let us fade away it's not a price i want to pay and it's not too late no we lost our purpose chasing all that now nothing but waves in this villain in i want to dry up but you just keep on going don't you i don't even know how we got here all my reasoning have disappeared i want to bury the hatchet and find the way back to our home our home our home
we don't have to drift inside this dome I will not let us fade away It's not a price I wanna pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all that I need I feel that we can break free We can still go back there To a place with no cares We can turn this ship around We can turn this ship around All the way back home Chasing all that we do not care Chasing all that we don't have Chasing all that Ourselves. Didn't have much, but nevertheless, we were true to each other. But now we don't even bother. I remember you being hopeful, but the tall waves have worn us down. And slowly we are drowning. That's why you need to come with me, with me, with me. Turn around 180 degrees and cross the sea. I will not let us fade away It's not a price I wanna pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all
shampoo and conditioning experience was amazing. And I would love any feedback you have for using uh, your acidic concentrate from Redken. By all means, you can put it right there in the comment box. It's always great to know. I just, I'm so excited to have you guys back because this is such a cool thing. I have to say, I have never done styling at the same time as doing a class on myself. I mean, I'm used to doing it with mannequin heads, but not on myself. So this is going to be really good and it's going to just be fun. So I, just to, on a time saver, I want to show you from half my head. So I want to be able to show from half my head. So. What I did was I separated my hair right here and I'm just going to take away this little towel. Now how cute is this? Did you guys all get this in your box? It's a really great hair wrap. So it's very great uh, for all hair types. Your hair is super coarse and curly to super fine and straight. It doesn't matter. This is really gentle on the hair and it doesn't cause any sort of friction with it. Hey everybody, all right, so I heard that my mic was a little bit not working, so we wanna make sure that it is still good to go. So can everybody give me the thumbs up if you see it working? Or hear it? <laughs> not see it, but. <laughs> like I said, this is like, we're doing this live, so things like this happen. So thank you so much for being amazing. Oh, I'm getting thumbs up. Thank you guys so much. All right, so. I wet the half side of my head here. I washed my hair quickly. I was able to put this, uh, our great little towel. And how cute is this? So nice. And now I'm going to put um, the leave-in conditioner. And you're going to see how I put it on the ends here, our acidic perfecting concentrate. I'm just putting a little bit because I am, my hair has been like laying on top of this towel, so it's slowly starting to dry here. And I'm just going to add it to the ends, working my way up, really concentrating on this front area, because I'm gonna tell you, if you're getting the most, the areas that you're probably getting the most damage in is in the front. Because this is where we normally put a lot of our hot tools. This is what we're touching constantly, putting behind our ears. If you get a money piece in your hair, like the hair, um, you know, our different balayage techniques, this is usually where it's all concentrated. So this is a great spot to be able to try it out. This is also a great time to be able to try it out. Now, if you're in the Ontario area and you're still on lockdown, what a great way to be able to practice during this time is how to style your hair. So this is why this is so fun. I love that I'm able to have this opportunity opportunity with you right now to be able to show you how to get that perfect blowout. Now, because I'm going to be using a blow dryer, I'm going to talk about the action that I'm going to do, do it, and then come back and talk about it again. So you'll see me blow drying, but I'm gonna be asking the team to give me a thumbs up if I'm talking and you can hear me or not. So you guys can let me know if you want me to pause before I start while I'm blow drying. That all made sense. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so in your kit, I know that you have also a wet brush. This is going to be probably your favorite brush right now. So as you just go ahead and brush out your hair, because you just got into the, shamp uh, the shampoo, conditioner, you put the leave-in, now you can go ahead and brush your hair. This brush is amazing for all hair types. If you have super coarse curly hair, or super fine and straight, it doesn't matter. Because it's from wet brush, it's a detangler. So the, the bristles in it, if you notice, are really fine and uh, there's a lot of space in between. They're not super aggressive in holding its position. So if it does hit a snag in any way, it slowly moves it down and not jams it 
to create a knot. So this is really important to understand when you're using a wet brush. It is designed to take out tangles. So when my hair is curly, I usually go quite a while without washing my hair in between. Like I'll go a week, not even an issue. So when I do that, when I first wash it again, I'm gonna have a lot of tangles because during that time, I'm not brushing it constantly. So this is such a great brush to use. And when you're properly brushing your hair, just a note to self or for anyone who has young ones and you have to brush their hair as well, always start from the ends. You're gonna start from your ends and you're gonna work your way up. Now, if you noticed, I put the acidic concentrate in, in the beginning, um, the leave-in, because I wanted to first work it through before I go ahead and brush my hair. So by all means, you can do that as well. So you're starting from the ends and you're slowly working your way up. If I started at the beginning and I had a bit of a snag right here, all I'm doing is I could possibly be jamming that in together and now I'm dragging it through. You wanna slowly work it out as you go up the hair. All right, so perfect with using our wet brush. Now, we're gonna use the wet brush also to blow dry. And if you notice in the kit, there isn't a round brush or a curling iron or anything like that. So I'm gonna talk about how to get to that perfect state of blow drying that now you can do whatever you want after. If you want a round brush, I'm gonna show you. Or if you wanna use a curling iron to be able to create curls in your hair, or if you want a uh, flat iron. From the spot I'm gonna get you to, is where you're gonna take it to the next level. If your hair is naturally curly and you want to keep with your natural curls, you're going to go through this uh, process a little bit differently. So I will be talking about that as we go along as well, all right? So first off, we go ahead and brush your hair. If your hair is naturally curly, you're gonna take smaller sections and that's when you can really go in with the leave-in conditioner and the, the um, the acidic concentrating uh, right here. And you can really apply it in on every level. Now I'll show you that. But we're gonna do this as a blow dry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the ends. I'm going to section, and it's almost like, I would say about two inches. So if you're doing your whole entire head, you would wanna separate just below the occipital bone down. So just this area here. Now, as I'm moving along, I'm gonna be looking to my team here so you guys have the best view. And I'm gonna be asking Mike from 20 Valley who is gonna be giving me the thumbs up that this looks good. So if you hear me say Mike, that's who I'm talking to. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna clip this up. I know when your kits, you guys all got clips. Now remember, I'm only doing half my head. So majority of you are sectioning all the way back, just like here and then this whole top would go up, right? So you have the whole back hair. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to blow dry. Using our wet brush and our Hot Tools blow dryer, what I'm concentrating on is keeping that hair in the brush and we're just gonna go down in a, in a drying motion, just like this. If you notice right now, this is me pretending that the blow dryer is on, I'm just going back and forth. I'm just taking that hair and I'm going back and forth as I blow dry. If you notice what I'm doing is not only am I going back and forth, I'm actually using my brush and bringing it down. So it's not gonna be perfectly straight because my hair is naturally curly, but what it's doing is starting to get those roots to go down in the area that I want them to sit in. Now for anybody who does have naturally curly hair and you're trying this for the first time, when you style your hair straighter or round brushed or curly, it's always the roots that are the hardest. So that's why we're starting off with the roots because the mid length to the ends, this is gonna be a little bit uh, like frizzier because I'm not really putting a lot of um, effort into it. That's what you're gonna end up getting with your round brush or your curling iron or your flat iron after. So that's why I'm concentrating on just doing the crisscross motion just like this with the blow dryer. Now, you're probably asking me why, oh, I think I'm gonna get an extra bottle of water so you guys can actually see me do it because it's starting to dry as I sit here. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> so I'm just gonna spray this in here. So if you're wondering why I'm going back and forth with the roots, this is important to know because if I just brushed all this way, 
I'm making the root go in that direction. So that's not really a natural way of sitting. And this hair underneath my head here, I want it to have that natural sitting spot. So by not concentrating in one direction and switching it up and going crisscross, it's just gonna lay nicely in its natural position. Does this make sense? All right. And then from there, after I get that going and I feel like it's in a good spot for dry, I'm just going to use my blow dryer just like this. And if you notice, I have that nozzle. Remember the nozzle is important to be there. It's on an angle. I don't have it like this. If I had it like this, I'm applying a lot of damage and heat blast right to the hair shaft that is absolutely unnecessary. And all it's doing is creating damage. So it's not needed. The blow dryer is here to remove that water. So by doing it in this angle, we are pushing it down as I'm going with the, with the brush itself. How does that sound? Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start off with just doing the roots back and forth, and then I'm gonna bring it right down. Now, let's just put on. One more swipe. I think we're good here. All right. So far, so good. Okay, so for anybody that was actually able to dry during that time, I know I'm only doing one section, so it's a little bit shorter. Um, how does your hair feel? Like, honestly, it feels so silky. It really feels like a million dollars. This is so exciting for me because I'm so behind this, this product it is just amazing okay so now we've done that like i said don't worry if your hair is a little bit frizzy in the ends that gets done after the fact we're just getting that perfect blowout to get you to whatever styling you want to do afterwards anybody for that natural hair um, that wants to just to enhance their curls with the treatment what we did was we just went in and we started off with your leave-in here, our acidic uh, perfecting concentrate treatment, and you're starting from the ends, working your way up. And each of those sections, you wanna give it a little bit of that spiral, so you're enhancing those curls to stay together. Almost like a finger width of hair, that amount. All right, so now we're gonna go to the next section. I'm gonna breeze through this. Don't worry, I'm not worried if you aren't able to do the whole thing the same time as I, because I am only doing half my head. So now I'm taking the next section. And if you notice, I went just like about temple area above my ear, and back here, it's a little bit lower. Just the reason why I took it all the way to the front here is I have no problems rocking out this hair. I don't have, we all have an ear in this area, so you don't have a big chunk of hair here, so it's okay to take this much. And it's okay if that lays on top of the other dry hair, because we're gonna dry it in a second. Now, I'm just gonna clip this away. Now remember we talked about the motion of where we want those roots to lie. So those roots are going to lie, same thing, down. Now, I'm a person that has finer hair in the front, so this is for all my finer hair people out there. If you've ever noticed um, when you dry your hair and you give yourself a blowout or, or beach waves or anything, it can look finer in the front. I wanna make sure 
I'm not pushing my hair back at any point, all right? Otherwise, when the hair is styled, it's always going back away from my face and I don't have that fullness, the pieces around my face. So I wanna make sure that area is laying flat against my head going forward. That's how you can get that fullness here. And in the back, it is okay if you wanna crisscross, that is totally fine. So like I said, in this area, I'm just gonna blow dry it forward so I have those hairs sitting here. And in the back, crisscross. And then after, I'm just gonna do this right down to the ends to dry it all out. Are we good? Awesome. Just gonna turn that on. I also want you to know that I am using high heat. So if you are worried about it, try off with medium and then move to high as you're, as you're getting comfortable getting comfortable with your blow dryer. Remember, you got the, leave, the, you got the heat protected in there, so you're good. curl so that's why I'm getting those frizzies but it is smoothing it really nicely by having that leave-in treatment I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the next one and as I'm jumping into the next one I would absolutely love to see how you do with any of these blowouts or these hot tips that we talk about. Remember to make sure to tag Chatters, make sure to tag Redkin, and also using these great blow dryers from Hot Tools, make sure to tag them and wet brush as well. So amazing. All right, so I'm going to do actually my fringe first because I just want you guys to see this. So as I'm doing, our fringes are doing all sorts of different things, right? We have a little bit of a curtain bang going on. If you want to go a side sweep, that's all fine. I'm going to show you how to do a perfect curtain bang. So right now I have mine, mine's a little bit on the longer side, but I get a cowlick on this one side which brings it up and this side it sits flat. So I'm gonna take it a little bit of this hair so I can show you how to properly blow dry your fringe. And remember we talked about doing crisscross because we want it to sit in a natural um, position. You would do this also if you have a full fringe. So I'm gonna go back and forth. Now because I have a cowlick that always wants to pop up here, I'm gonna make sure to concentrate to lay it flat on this side because this side is always my flat side. I'm gonna make sure to concentrate to have that one go up. So that's how I'm, you wanna to go to the reverse if you want it to tame it. Does that make sense? Perfect. So I'm gonna do that. Oops. We're getting there, we're getting there, we're almost done. So this time, this side was already kind of dry, so I wanted to make sure that you knew that. But now we have this in a good spot. You can already see it wants to bend out, which I will do with the uh, round brush after the fact. 
But now we're gonna finish up with this section. So we have this large section at the end. Now this is the area that I do wanna have a lot more volume in. So when you wanna have volume, we don't want it to lie in that natural position. You wanna go against the grain. So we wanna push it forward so we can get the most amount of volume in that area. So remember that when you're blow drying all those spots. Remember we went down here, crisscross to fall in natural. We went straight into the head here. So I had more fullness around my face. I crisscrossed here. And now up at the top, I'm gonna to be blow drying it forward. Now because this section is kind of large, I'm gonna actually split it into two. So I'll drop that down. And now I'm just gonna brush this forward. Then I'll take out that clip and brush the remaining forward. Are we good? Perfect. Oops. Now you can see how important. You guys can hear me while I'm talking like this. Is that okay? I think you can. <laughs> Here's my mic. <laughs> so this is why it's important to have this nozzle. This is really directing the airflow. And it's giving you full control of how you're gonna style. If I had this off, it would blast my hair and it would just be a big frizzy mess. Now I'm gonna take it the next clip and I'm just gonna brush that forward as well. feeling good. Now I know, like I said, that my mid length to ends are frizzy and that's fine. It's actually pretty tame considering how curly my hair can actually get because we were using our um, acidic shampoo conditioner and our perfecting concentrate there. It is helping to seal down that, but now I'm gonna just really seal it by adding a little bit of a round brush. Now, if you're somebody who likes, you're more comfortable with using a curling iron to create a beach wave or anything like that, by all means, this is the time that you would go ahead and do it. Because you've had your hair nice and sealed by doing the blow dry, we have our heat protectant in, we're ready to go. If you wanted to add um, a little bit of the Guts 10 for extra volume, you can go ahead and do that. In fact, you know what? Let's do it. We still have a couple minutes here. I'm gonna show you how you can put this just in your dry hair. Remember I said it was like hairspray and moose had a baby? There we go. Do you see it in there? Let's give it a good shake. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, see, there you go. So I'm putting it in. I'm just gonna mix that around. This helps to give that little bit of lift. I am gonna just dry it quickly so we have that little bit of lift. And like I was mentioning before, this is why it's so important to have that nozzle because it's really concentrating the airflow in the proper spot. All right. Just like so. You see how I'm getting that lift already? And it was just a little bit of mousse. There are guts 10. All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna show you how to quickly style your curtain bang, your fringe, or whatever you have, and you wanna create that little bit of lift, that really nice like flow that you're seeing. So, I'm gonna start off with my wet brush, that is a round brush as well, and I'm gonna just roll it forward for one second just to get that root in motion. And then afterwards, I'm actually gonna roll it away from my face, bringing it just down like this, and this will give us a little bit of that swoop away. So don't worry that your hair is already dry. We're using our round brush as more of a hot tool now. It's not necessarily for drying our hair. So 
show is over and now it's going under. <laughs> One more swipe. Just like so. Whoop. So now I have that nice roundness. If you want more of a roundness, you're gonna wanna go with a smaller round brush. I just wanted to have it kind of smooth. Just really, really nice softness around the face. Now, I like to do my fringe right away because it's usually the one that gets a little bit crazy on me. So now I'm gonna do the underneath pieces and I'm gonna just clip this top portion away so I can reach these guys and it's not getting tangled. If you ever struggle with blow drying your hair and doing a round brush, remember sectioning is key. Keep all those pieces away so you're only concentrating on one area. Now with this area, I'm actually going to round brush down and around. So my hair is traveling over right there and I'm smoothing it with a blow dryer, just giving it that little bit of roundness. Remember, we already got those roots, so we don't have to concentrate in the roots as much. want to show you something really hot about hot tools after blow drying you can press down to do the cool shot right up here and that will instantly cool down the curl that's in your round brush and help to really set that that curl so I just left it in there for a minute now I'm going to take this large section here and same thing I'm just going to give it a little bit of a round brush flipping it around the brush so it has a bit of a tension as I just pull it down Notice how smooth this is to brush through. Oops, I'm missing it. How smooth it is to brush through because you have used the whole ABC treatment from Redkin. <laughs> now I'm going to use the cool shot. All I'm doing is pressing in that button. Cool down that area. that off for one second while it's around my round brush and now I'm just going to slide it out. Ta-da! Can you see it there? Perfect. Now we're just going to do the last one. Now I'm taking these sections pretty large. My hair's a little bit on the finer side so I can do that. Don't worry if your sections are a little bit smaller. Now for me to save time when I do my hair on um, a day-to-day, -day, I'll usually, I can just curl it and it's really amazing to do that as well. Hot Tools actually has a really great curling brush and it works amazing also. So now, starting at the top, sorry, I didn't tell you what I was doing. Starting at the top, I'm just rounding up over my root. I'm going to bring it forward and I'm concentrating that airflow just in the brush itself. Because like I said, we're not blow drying the hair. The hair is already dry. I'm using the heat from the blow dryer act as a hot tool with the round brush. loving it. I have to tell you, I'm doing this blow dry and I don't really have a mirror in front of me. So if I'm looking a little fumbly, it's only really because of that. But trust me when I tell you, even though I'm a hairstylist, um, it's always easier to do someone else's hair. <laughs> so that's why I'm showing you. It is real. Like when you're trying this on your own, it's always a great time to try it for the first time when you're not doing something that is like high stress. You're trying to get ready for an event or anything. This is a great time to practice. We're on lockdown right now. Might as well try it out, right? So I'm just leaving that in there so it can cool. Now I'm gonna bring that back. Now I know that I, I talked a little bit 
about the nozzle and I just want to talk about it again, why it's so important. I get this question a lot as a hairstylist. I get a lot of people coming in and they have a lot of breakage around their fringe and on the sides. And that's usually where you concentrate the blow dryer a lot. So by taking off the nozzle, and it's really warm because we were just using it, if you notice there's those vents, those hot uh, metal area right there on the edge of the blow dryer. Now, when that heats up because it has hot air going through, it doesn't matter the amount of heat protection that you are using, this is like hot. So if you notice you're getting a lot of breakage in your fringe area and you are a person that uses a blow dryer all the time and you don't have a nozzle, I can guarantee this is literally singeing it off. That is why, number one, it is so important to put a nozzle on. Number two, you're getting full um, concentration of your airflow. So if I had this off and I'm blow drying my hair like this, it's gonna be a big frizzy mess. And for anybody out there that normally blow dries your hair like this, nozzle or no nozzle, what you're doing is you're causing a lot of work after. If you notice, my round brush was so much faster as uh, styling, instead of if I just blow dried my hair, like tossing it around, it's a huge lion's mane, and now you have to take tiny sections to either flat iron it out or round brush it out. You gotta start right at the beginning. Using your wet brush your, as a paddle brush here, making sure that the root is going in the direction that you want it to go in, and then you're getting your hair into that good base. So here, I'm already, like this was fast. I really like, really went through this fast. Now, you notice I still have a little bit of frizz here. I have the, the motion, but I still have a little bit of frizz. This is the perfect time for this little baby, right? Our oil for all. And usually if I bring this out to anybody, they're like, yikes, your hair is wet. Well, it's such a refined oil. You're not getting a, a super thick serum. It's very refined. It's very like thin. I should have tried to pump this a few times beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, there we go. Okay, so here we go. We got a little bit there. I just put it into my palm. I'm just gonna show you again. It's just a very little amount that you need. Here we go, we're gonna do a nice zoom in. Mike does a nice tight shot, perfect. And then we go, little drip. And because it's almost like a, like a water, it's like very thin. You're not gonna overdo it. If you're worried about it, start at the ends and you can always tap it on your, your brush after, or your, uh, sorry, your towel. Now I'm just gonna run it through my hair. Because it's so refined, even if it looks like it's a little bit oily off the bat, it will absorb within the next few minutes because those molecules are so, so small. And if you notice, it just like instantly defrizzes. Yay! Thank you, Heidi, for saying my hair looks great. So here I'll just like, in the magic of television. <laughs> it's all finished, amazing. <laughs> now this side was put to, in a twist and you see that I got a little bit of a bend in there. This side you have like a really nice blowout. So from here you can see how you can do so many different things. Remember, I got you to the point of being able to style anything after the fact. You can do your um, curling iron, you can do your round brush, you can do anything from that point. And it's super, super easy. Now listen, if you have any questions or concerns or anything after today's segment, just in case if you want to be able to see this again as well, it is going to be posted on our YouTube channel, on Chatter's YouTube channel, so you can go back to reference anything, so you can be able to see it, and we always check to make sure that we're answering all your questions or anything during that time. So I'm going to put my nozzle back on, remember, do not throw it out. Thank you so much to Hot Tools for being able to give that uh, blow dryer to you guys. And thank you so much to Redkin for being able to share all their amazing products with us. And guys, I would love to hear your feedback from all of these great products that we have here. That shampoo and the conditioner and the leave-in and like the oil for all just feels amazing on my hands. I just have to tell you that. I'm just gonna keep running it through. Now, I want to make sure that all of these hot tips are always going to be talked about and done again. We love reposting anything that you do. And anytime we have other uh, YouTube um, channels going on, we will also notify you. So make sure to follow us, subscribe on our Chatter's YouTube channel as well. So it has been amazing to see all you guys on here today. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me into your living rooms. I can't really see you, so don't worry if uh, you're in your pajamas still. I just said that. 
<laughs> but thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed all of these hot tips. Feel free to ask any questions. Once again, my name is Cindy Duplantis. I am the Chatters Ambassador. Until I see you all again very soon. And thank you to Chatters, Jessica from Chatters. We have Natalie, we have Bran, and we have Mike from 20 Valley, who's done all the camera work. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you soon. Bye. Mwah.